soulful and powerful voice. Two-time Grammy Award winner, Lauren Daigle. September 6th, FedEx Forum. The Kaleidoscope Tour. Tickets are on sale now at laurendaigle.com. Lauren Daigle, live in concert. Produced by AEG Presents. Stevie Nicks. One special night. Saturday, October 28th, live at FedEx Forum. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss Stevie Nicks. Live at FedEx Forum. Yeah, hold up, park the rose truck. Why not pull up Lambo car and pop it with the doors up? No, this got Colossal, I got models trying to pay me the <laughs> Tell her the price then went up. Uh, it's gonna cost more than the buck. No, that shit gonna be high. It got my name on this chronic. Driving slow now, but this car goes zero to 60 if I punch it. She wake up and munch it. Let me see what she... Can't be quick, can't be tired. Can't be tired. Can't be tired. I be in a loop, she be in a group. Brody want a friend, don't have the hoop. Cause I'm the net, bro, I'm living proof. How can I lose when we the who's who's? Memphis, where you at? <laughs> where you at? Where are you at? This is unbelievable. Where you at? Monday Night Raw is where it's at. Where are you at? Welcome to Monday Night Raw. Live in Memphis, Monday, August 28th. Tickets and ringsider packages available now. Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow. August 24th at FedEx Forum with special guests Marcus King and Alan Stone. On sale now at LiveNation.com. Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow. Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt. Live from the Grind City Media Studios on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Good morning to everyone with us live. Good whatever to the rest of you. It is August, a new month. We survived the hottest record month in world history we get college football this month we get nfl this month we absolutely love it here coming up on today's show grind city media senior editor and analyst mike wallace is going to join us he is headed to las vegas where he will cover jaron jackson jr and team usa as they begin training camp ahead of fiba world cup later on this month we'll talk to him about this opportunity for jaron along with santi aldama who will be representing for team spain he'll be about 20 minutes in uh, uh, we have a new episode of As the College Conference Realignment World Turns. It should drop later today with news that the Pac-12 finally, allegedly, reportedly, has a media deal. And Commissioner George Klievkoff is meeting with athletic directors and his board this morning, only for later this afternoon, the Arizona Board of Regents, which represents Arizona, Arizona State, and Northern Arizona, 
Big 12 has the opportunity to do the funniest thing possible. Northern Arizona should be included in all of this. But alas, they are meeting later this afternoon. It's a surprise meeting. It's virtual. So we will see what that means for the Pac-12 media rights deal. Are multiple schools headed to the Big 12? Is one school headed to the Big 12? We'll talk about all of that. We also learned that eight college football bowl games don't have title sponsors for next season. And we took that as an opportunity for us to unofficially, officially put our hat in the ring to sponsor one of these games. We will be voting on which bowl game the JB Show with CJ Hurt should sponsor this upcoming college football season. It is also TV Tuesday, two big losses in the television world yesterday. We'll talk about those. We will also get into what we are watching on TV. But of course, we have to start with the World Cup. And if you woke up in the wee hours of the morning at 2 a.m. to watch the U.S. women's national team play their way to a nil-nil draw, with Portugal sealing their spot in the knockout round but failing to win their group for the first time since 2011. If you stayed up for that performance last night, if you woke up for that performance last night, I think you should get a special tax break because you are the patriot of all patriotism. I didn't do it. CJ, you're wearing red, white, right, and blue. You did. I, Your I had thoughts this, on the I match. I had this on during the match and just rolled out of, off of the couch and said, okay, time to go to work. First things first, when I checked my time, when I checked the, the t game time, just to make sure, it told me one. I Lies. looked at it, it's at 1 a.m. Central Standard Time. And I get up at 12.30, I gotta make sure the satellite, cause I, I got the antenna still, not the antennas, but the digital satellite, gotta make sure that's working right. So I got that set up, everything is good. And I'm watching the damn pregame show for an hour. I could have got an hour more of sleep had I known it would come on at two, and then it came on. You gotta follow the sickos. And then it was just disappointing. The sickos on Did they know? On Twitter slash X. They tweeted out a warning to everyone. I should have forwarded it oh, to please. you. Next that time the pregame show me. starts now. The game will actually start. They always know because they are the sickest please of the sickos of sports. Because I thought anyway. that the match started at one. And then it was just disappointing. I'm just sorry. just disappointment after disappointment. This team when we talked about it to start the tournament, it was, oh, a bunch of young faces, a bunch of this is going to be exciting. And mine was, my take on that was, well, they, I don't think they're ready. I didn't think Sophia Smith was ready pre-tournament. I didn't, didn't think Trinity Rodman was going to be ready uh, pre-tournament. I didn't think uh, DeMello was ready pre-tournament. And lo and behold, they, they just haven't been. They, they, they aren't. They aren't. And it hurts when you're missing Chris and Press. It hurts when you're missing... Uh, Katarina, it hurts when you're missing Salbron, it hurts when you're missing the Mewis sisters, it hurts when you're missing Swanson, who possibly is the, the best goal scorer on the roster. All of them are out with injuries. But yo, when you put on that red, white, and blue, whoever you are, the, the standard is the standard. And it's not good enough just to get to the round of, of 16. I don't think this team has ever failed to make it to a semifinal, and they are in danger of doing that there's no creativity on the pitch there they're small groups when you get the ball up on the wing and it's you and a teammate versus two of theirs two of your opponents there that hasn't been working it's almost like players don't know where to go in space once they give up the ball routinely i've i've seen crystal dunn um i've seen rose lavelle seen uh haran and others have the ball on that wing threatening and then nobody make themselves available. Nobody makes themselves available to them. And so what ends up happening? The ball gets dispossessed, and the other team is running back down the field. And when you have a defender in Crystal Dunn who's so good, let, let, let's be clear, Crystal Dunn is phenomenal. She's a defender that comes up and plays almost forward. She comes up and plays midfield a lot. And so when she's up trying to create pressure and goal opportunities, when that ball gets dispossessed and she has to sprint back the length of the field, yo, that's how you end up giving up quality looks on goal. And it's, it's just been tough, tough for the, the team, not just this game and last game, but honestly, against Vietnam as well. Now, they were able to just out-athlete Vietnam. You're not going to be able to out-athlete most of the, the rest of the teams in the tournament. You're not going to be able to out. You weren't able to out-athlete the Netherlands. You weren't able to out-athlete Portugal. You're not going to be able to out-athlete the Swedes. So what are you going to do? How are you going to possess the ball? So much about the U.S.'s game plan looks like it's just, and this is on Vlad, it looks like it's just kick that ball down the field, 
let Williams or Rodman or or uh, Smith or Alex Morgan let one of those do that. Just outrun them to the ball, and then we'll we'll get goals that way. And you're not going to be able to do that against the good yeah. teams in the World Cup. You're going to have to have possession. You're going to have to use your possession to create opportunities to create an opportunity on goal. And right now, the team just isn't doing that. Yeah, and like you said, the expectation now as the U.S. finishes second in their group, they will play the winner of Group G, which is most likely Sweden. Sweden, of course, knocking the U.S. or beating the U.S. in the Olympics a couple of years ago. They're a that very good team. They're throttled gonna, them. Throttled them. Like, They're like the number the three team in the country. Like, the only thing the U.S. has oh. at this point, I'm sorry, in the, in the country. <laughs> I love the state of Sweden in the United States of America. The Swedes are my people. Please don't come for me. I hope to go there someday. Like I went to my pilgrimage of Ireland. But no, I mean, like they're the number one, the number three team in the world. The thing that the U.S. still can hang its hat on for at this moment in time, like they are still the number one ranked team in the world. They don't look like it. They haven't looked like it this tournament, and especially last night. But you do advance into the round of 16, into the knockout round, and now you have to put this past game behind you. There is an appropriate amount of of criticism on Coach Vlad, on, on Vlatko, because that lack of creativity, like you talked about, the lack of in-game adjustments. I was shocked but not shocked to see substitutions yet again. Where are they? You have all of these players. You have options. And to be able to change things up in the middle of a game to try to throw something new at a team like Portugal last night, you would think would be a plus for the U.S. women's national team. And instead, it's just poof into thin air. It's, it's a disappearing act. And you don't have substitutions that you would expect to have. I did not wake up to watch the game. I went back and watched highlights this morning, listened to the commentary on it afterwards. And there was note of coming out of the Olympics, the thought that perhaps that was going to be the end of the road for Vlatko as coach of the U.S. women's national team. A lot of players talked about losing the joy for the sport, not having as much fun anymore. It was disappointing. And of course, when you're not winning, Things are a lot more difficult, but you have to have the appropriate coach in place. And I thought it was really telling that it was Kelly O'Hara who was the first one into the circle last night to address the team. Didn't even really light into the team. It was just a matter of, let's go. We had to move on, on to the next. And it's not the coach. And it should be the coach. Like, there should be more of a, hey, like, this was unacceptable. We've got to move on. We've got to be better. But we can't have a performance like this again. No. No, and it's the, the standard is the standard. And this was going to be a transition team anyway. You think about some of the players that were on the, the World Cup roster when this run started for Team USA. Abby Wombat. Abby Wombat isn't there anymore. Yeah. Uh, Carly Lloyd isn't there anymore. Rapino and Alex Morgan, while they're there, they aren't in their primes. They're on the, the twilight of their careers right now, and, and as it pertains to international competition. So this was going to be a transition team anyway. Now, you hurt that transition team remarkably, hurt it a ton when Chris Press isn't in the midfield. That's somebody who's real creative with the ball at her feet and understands how to get open and where the open space is. And with her and Lavelle and even Julie Ertz in that midfield together, they are really, really good. They've got good chemistry, and they know where to go to get open. It hurts not having Katarina. Katarina with the ball at her feet is remarkable. She'll create something out of nothing seven, eight times out of ten, and she's not out there. Speaking of people who can create something out of nothing, if you're going to just say, all right, we're just going to kick the ball deep, go out, run them, Swanson is the one. That Mallory Swanson is who you want doing that. She had a stretch, and I can't remember exactly what the stretch was, but I do believe she had a stretch of games where international competition-wise, she was scoring goals, plural, with an S, where she was one goal, two, not not just one goal, two, three goals, a, a match a, over a significant period of time. And you're missing that. So you have those players out and this this younger crop of players who I'm not sure they would play if those gals were good to go. They're on the pitch and they're it's a learning process and they're they're struggling right now to learn where to go on this particular team. They are stars. They are studs on their professional rosters, be it Rodman, be it uh, uh, Smith, be it Morgan. They are all stars on their individual uh, professional clubs. But when you put all that talent together, you've got to know where to go and you've got to understand, hey, this is where I need to go. Maybe I don't push the ball all the way down the side. Maybe I slow up, hold it here, make a pass so that they can make a pass so that they can make a pass and I run through and now the opportunity has been 
created. And they're, they, they're just struggling to understand that. With that being said, that is the why they are struggling. Is that an acceptable why? Hell no. Because, again, the standard is a standard. You got this crest on your chest, baby. That's the deal. It's two of them. Two of them back to back. Going to be trying to be the first team ever to win three. The standard is greatness. And when you think about all of the players who have put this uniform on before you, the, the Mia Hams of the world, right? You think about those players Brandy who have Chastain. Brandy Chastain. You think about those dudes who have put this uniform on before you and have set the standard so high, anything short of a semifinal round. And for me, like third place. But at the very least, anything short of a yeah. semifinal round is, is a disappointment for this, this and team. That's why, like, Carly Lord came in hot after the game. She's on the Fox Sports broadcast crew, and she had a lot of choice words, some of which completely agree with, like, the fact that the U.S. was playing not to win but not to lose, which is an unacceptable a place to be in if you are Team USA. They were saved by the post. I mean, they're incredibly fortunate that that goal from Portugal did not go in. It just hit the post, and that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes in soccer. She also went in on the team coming from a place of confidence versus arrogance and saying that that line is very thin. And when she started shifting into that point, I, one, felt it was a little rich because Carly Lloyd is one of the most arrogant players in the history of the sport, which I love. Let me be clear. I am team arrogance. I am team have fun. I am team showboat, showmanship be damned, like whatever you want to do when you're going out there. And it helps if you're winning. And it helps that Carly Lloyd did things like score a midfield goal against Japan in 2015. So she has that credibility to stand on. But tonally, it just felt a little weird from Carly Lloyd. And it felt very much, um, I thought footloose <laughs> because she was very upset that the team was dancing with fans afterwards. They were signing autographs and like dancing isn't a crime. I get it. They weren't displaying the level of despair that you hoped that they would after having a nil nil tie. But it just felt like a little bit laying it on thick of this is not what they should be doing. And the quickness of which Lexi jumped in and joining her and just the overall it was the tone of it. We talk a lot about how you can say something and maybe you kind of would agree with it if it weren't for the tone. It just felt like a lot laying behind it that I didn't necessarily think Carly Lloyd was coming from a place of sincerely trying to help. It almost felt like jealousy, not jealousy. They don't but like just you. anger. That, not, I mean, from my vantage point, right? They don't like each it other. It doesn't feel like the team and Carly Lloyd, and that's that was true even when Carly Lloyd was on the team. There, there were moments where, um, like, the, the players kneeling, going all the way back to that, and everybody on the field kneeling, everybody on the field locking arms, and Carly Lloyd is doing no such thing. And it, it, it felt like then there was a bit of disconnect. She's been vocal, and, hey, all that off-the-field stuff does not matter to me as the team is fighting to push the game forward, as the team is fighting to get more money into the, the women's uh, game from the the not just their uh, nation's federation, not just the United States uh, Soccer Federation, but yeah. globally. When that fight was taking place, Carly Lloyd was kind of vocal about, "Hey, I don't I don't care about that, and they shouldn't care about that either." And so I think that there's uh, friction. I, I think it's safe to say there's at the very least a bit of tension, a bit of friction with Carly Lloyd and some of the women that she's played with internationally. With that being said. Carly Lloyd's point about arrogance versus uh, confidence. Like you can be arrogant if you're Carly Lloyd. She she was she was great. You can have that overconfidence if you can do the half the midfield shot and have it going. If you can single handedly take over and impose your wills on opposing teams' defenses. If you can break their will to play soccer in a ninety minute match, you can do that. But if you can't. You know, you got to dial that back. I love, I love confidence. I love overconfidence. I love stunting on people as much as you do. I think that that's something you have to earn, though. You have to, you have to be able to back it up. And right now, the team isn't backing it up. Thought it was interesting after um, about two or three segments after Lloyd made her comment, they throw to O'Reilly on the other desk. And O'Reilly was one of Lloyd's teammates on the 2015 Women's World Cup. They played more than a handful of matches together in, in international competition. And O'Reilly's whole thing was, yo, we don't need to break these women down. We need to build them up. They need more positivity. Going completely counter to what Carly Lloyd is yeah. saying. And so it, it's, it's more than one way to look at this. 
But it seems like the way Lloyd, Carly Lloyd is looking at it is in direct contrast to what potentially the women on the field and some of the past U.S. greats are looking at it, which may be why there was friction. always that friction, that head button going on. But they needed Carly, Carly right. Lloyd because she was a dudette. She was out there balling out. It just felt very borderline shut up and dribble. And that could be me completely projecting. No, um, and I think a part of it is because if you, if you take the shut up and dribble approach with U.S. women's soccer, you take away the fact that they fought f so valiantly for increase in pay and something that trickled down into women's sports across the board. That's a, it's an overhead conversation that certainly doesn't have anything to do with the fact that they finished in a nil-nil draw with Portugal last night, but that's why Carly Lloyd's comments just kind of irked me a tad. I know most people agree. Like, we talked about it with the Grizzlies. You and I disagreed when it came to how the Memphis Grizzlies acted as a team with some of their shenanigans, with the dancing, with the post-game press conferences, and, like, photobombing one another and having so much fun. I never have a problem with people having fun, and I get it. Sometimes you have an L in the middle of that, or a stretch of losses, or it doesn't feel as if you are going for, in the Grizzlies' case, fighting for a championship, in the U.S. women's national team's case as of last night, fighting for a spot in the World Cup finals, hopefully, and taking a third straight World Cup championship finish. Um, I, that will never bother me the way that it bothers some people. I completely understand why it does, though, because people want their favorite athletes of their favorite team, and in this case, your, your country's team, to be pissed off after a performance like yesterday. I think you can be both. Or, 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 or to earn the fun. That, sure. this, this is my stance on, on fun. Like you, that's that can't come before the business of the sport, and the business of the sport is winning. So if you want to have fun, great, have fun. You gotta win though. If you're not winning, I'm not sure how much fun you should be having. That is something that you have to earn. We talk, we talk after the show all the time about earning things. <laughs> you have to earn it, man. If you earn it, do it. If you ain't earned it, like you ain't earned it. Someone who's earned his place on this show each and every yeah. week, Mike Wallace. Remind me to talk to you about uh, Courtney and, and earning things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear the latest in the marriage saga of CJ and the wife, as she is referred to on social media. But Mike Wallace did just walk into the studio. He is headed to Las Vegas to cover Team USA training camp ahead of the FIFA World Cup later this month. Jaron Jackson Jr. will be repping Team USA. Santi Aldama repping Team Spain. We'll talk to Mike Wallace about all of that on the other side. Obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep-related breathing disorder where a person's breathing is blocked or cut off while sleeping. It is seen in all age groups, but increases in frequency as we age and gain weight. Symptoms include snoring, excessive daytime sleepiness, gasping during sleep, and or insomnia. To schedule an appointment, contact Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialists at 901-276-6507. Let them help you breathe easy and sleep well. Let's talk about some guys that you would love to see in different situations. LaMelo Ball. Ooh, spicy. Boban. He plays on Houston right now, and I think he's too lovable to just sit there and lose all the time. I love him, and I would like him to be on a contending team so he can smile more because the world needs more Boban smiles. He's in every commercial. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Memphis fans can now enhance each moment of their day with the refreshingly luxurious taste of Cintron sparkling flavored energy beverages served exclusively at FedEx Forum. Cintron World is a lifestyle beverage brand inspiring everyone to create their lives with intention, energy, and style. As the official partner of the Grizzlies, Cintron is offering a 10% discount on your next online order when you use promo code GRIZZLIES10 at CintronWorld.com and follow the lifestyle on social at Cintron World. Drink it, live it. FIBA basketball, international basketball, the topic of this last segment, and the Memphis Grizzlies have two players that will be participating. Jaron Jackson Jr. will be playing for Team USA, and Santi Aldama will play for Spain. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. 
Hey ladies, it's your girl Big Sue. Let's have some real talk about these fibroids and how they're causing you to miss out on life events. Doubling up on your products when you do leave the house only to keep running to the bathroom because of the bladder pressure. Or maybe you're dealing with pelvic pain so intense it nearly takes your breath away. Be present and win your life back with the fibroid team at VIP. Proud sponsors of the Memphis Grizzlies. Call 901-747-1007. That's 901-747-1007. Or online at VIP Fibroid. Com. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Topic number one, I think, was not so creative. Okay. And it is the new color of this eggplant retro foam. Okay. I was going to bring this, the actual original in, and I forgot. Well, we have a picture of the original, too. If we could go to that that second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Exciting happening at FedEx Forum in Memphis, and when there's an event you can't miss, you can find tickets at Ticketmaster, the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. Check out what's happening and get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com, unless you want tickets to Drake, in which case... It's always too soon when it comes to... We did a Drake draft. We did a, a Drake fake music festival where you even had Drake as one of your headliners to try to help the Drake process. And alas... Drake not coming to FedEx Forum after getting a key to the county. Mm. Mike Wallace, can mm. you believe that Drake mm. and we should mention that reportedly, allegedly, uh -huh. is because production-wise they could yeah, not set up logistics. Yeah. There yeah. is the University of Memphis yeah. graduation at FedEx Forum. Drake's show requires 20 Time plus trucks of yeah, space, production yeah. Yeah. Uh, materials and setup and needs more time move than the they were able to. You can't move the graduation. Yes, you can. You cannot move the graduation. Yes, you can. Who's more important? The children. No, they aren't. And their <laughs> they futures. Are. They aren't the future. And the degrees Have you that they work to these children? towards, unfortunately. <laughs> they are not it. <laughs> I still believe that children are the future and we should not move a graduation for a Drake Before concert. Drake is, concert. There, is there a concert you move a graduation for? Cher's final tour. <laughs> mm, mm. Wow. Wow. That's, that's... Is there a concert you would move a graduation yeah, for? Yeah, all of them. Because graduation ceremonies are silly. You have to have the graduation no, you don't. ceremony. Yes, you do. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. As somebody who has graduated a couple of times, not from pharmacy school, and as somebody who has gone to a couple of graduations, I went to some pharmacy school graduations, actually. Um, you don't need them. Graduation was the most, one of the most fun days of my life. Yes. Truly. Because really? you were graduating. Yes. I have. Now, 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 now. Yes. You bring truth up a great be told, point. Truth be told, is it truly an enjoyable spectator experience? No. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. It's the most uh, obligated, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's usually in the summer and it's yeah. hot if yeah. it's an outdoor experience. And it's usually long. So long. You got to listen to 400, 500, 600, 1,000 names before the one that you actually know and care about gets mentioned. Yeah. And at the and worst it's, it's, yeah. is when and you, you have multiple ceremonies. Yeah. Like at yeah. USC, they have the, the big group speaker, and then you break yeah. off to satellite ceremonies. So at least it's less people walking across the stage. Right, but it just right. makes for a yeah. longer day. My parents, who sat through my graduation together, which was wonderful, mm -hmm. but they always bring up that I – kind of disappeared the morning of graduation. My friends and I were having a grand time preparing for our final moments at the University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. And they were seated waiting to see me walk into like the big group and I was nowhere to be seen and they were so scared. And then they both say that they saw me with a red solo cup and a salute. And they just saw me wandering and they said, 
That's our girl. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Goes. You had an alternative graduation, right? You had an yeah. alternative opportunity. It was wonderful. For sure, for but sure. you're right. Being a spectator at a graduation, I That's have done that assignment. multiple times, and I yeah. never had a good time. Yeah. So That's you a bring up a good point. Man. In that case, I would rather be at the Drake concert. Which yeah. which one do you think those college graduates would rather be at? Do you think they'd rather be at their graduation or a Drake concert? Probably a Drake, a Drake concert. concert. Yeah, no question. Yeah, so Could just, they no have question. merged the just, two? Just Could say. we have finally had the Memphis madness that we were promised years ago <laughs> <laughs> and had Drake slash... So this isn't the first time. Memphis graduation. <laughs> Man, well, the, the first since time. I have moved here, we have been yeah. flirting with the will or won't Drake, Drake show up, yeah. show yeah, up there, to anything. Yeah. There were two people flirting with it real boldly once upon a time. Mm. <laughs> and Drake was... Drake... And Justin Timberlake were going to be here. Do you know how excited I was for that Memphis Madness? I wasn't even scheduled to work that night. And I came in just to work that Memphis Madness or just to show up to be yeah, there because I was not case. going to miss Drake and Justin Timberlake yeah, at Memphis yeah. Madness. And alas, uh, we did not get it. But Mike Wallace, yeah. how are you? What's I'm, new? I, I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm here. I'm like Drake. <laughs> You're here for a <laughs> you know couple days. Saying? I'm like Drake. I'm here. I'm in the building. You know, Well, Drake was in the building, though. He spent the week in the building. <laughs> You know did. what I mean? So he technically did get He was in the building. The he was at Rail Garden. Yeah. He shot yeah. a music video. Yeah. 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 But alas. At any rate, man, people get their money back. You know what I mean? They get their money back. It's been a whole line of great shows at FedEx Forum. So I'll be the company shield and share that there's plenty more shows you can get to. Uh, not Drake, but it'll be Chris plenty Stapleton. more. Chris Stapleton. LL Cool J. LL Cool J is coming. You know, Stevie Nicks. Think, did the money did the money bag yo show already go by? I don't think so. That hadn't come back. It's it's on its Anita way. Anita Baker's on her way. You know what I mean? So it's it's uh we just had Erica Badu left and Alicia, Alicia Keys. Keys. Yeah, right. so it's been it's been a great run. It's been a great run. Well, you yeah. are running away to Las <laughs> Vegas for a couple of days. You have the opportunity to go and yeah. cover Team USA training camp. And Jaron mm -hmm. Jackson Jr., of course, a part of Team USA ahead of the FIBA World Cup. How did this transpire, and what is it exactly that you're going to be doing down in Vegas? Well, I mean, you know, I guess it's five years ago now. Uh, well, four years ago when Jaron was on the select team. You know, Jaron has been part of Team USA for a long time. He was on the uh, under-17 Team USA team that – won the gold medal, you know, in the, in the youth division. And then he came back two years later uh, after his rookie year and was on the select team that prepared the 2020 Olympic team to go play uh, in the Olympics the following year. So this is sort of his turn and his, you know, matriculation through the Team USA process. And when you look at, like, you know, Grant Hill is the executive director now, Steve Kerr, um, they have a great relationship and connection with Jaron Jackson Sr. Uh, some of them have played with them um, and definitely against them. You know, the respect that the NBA and Team USA have for Jaron Jackson's family, you know, his mom and his dad, you know, Terry, Terry Jackson and what she does with the uh, WNBA PA, Players Association. So this is just a family situation. Jaron gets a chance, and he really is the anchor of this team because when you look at the roster, I pulled up the roster here. You know, I mean, Mikael Bridges, uh, uh, Bancaro, you know, Jalen Brunson, Anthony Edwards, Halliburton, uh, Josh Hart, Jaron Jackson, Cam Johnson, Walker Kessler, Bobby Portis, Austin Reeves, and Brandon Ingram. When you hear Jaron's name, he's probably the most decorated of those players. So when you talk about ranking the pecking order of stars that's on this Team USA FIBA team, uh, Jaron is going to be right in the middle of it. And, you know, we're here. Like, why, why wouldn't we want to be in an opportunity uh, to follow and cover uh, one of our players? And we have two players that are going to be playing on that international stage with Santi Aldama with number one ranked Spain and then Jaron with number two ranked Team USA. So I get an opportunity to be around him. Um, I'll have a sit down one-on-one -on -one with him. I'll be able to watch a couple of practices, uh, uh, you know, in sort of an exclusive coverage opportunity. And it was because I was there in 2019 and sort of followed them uh, that they reached back out and said, hey, you want to do this? Let's do it. If you were the coach yeah. of Team USA, would you play Jaron and Walker Kessler together? No. I wouldn't. Um, but it also, it would be matchups, though. Okay. You know what I mean? It'll be matchups because the thing about it, you still have, you also have Bobby Portis there, too. True. So you do have sort of a third kind of quasi-big. But I, I wouldn't play those two together because, I mean, they, you could have foul trouble and you want to be versatile, but you also – you have the right depth. I, I like the idea of playing them both together because Jaron's game is so, so diverse now yeah. where you can get away with playing him at the 3, 4, and the 5 if you really wanted to. And you don't have the same goaltending rules. You don't. You can get the ball off the rim. Right. You can block it off the rim. You can get in the lane doing free throw attempts. You know, it's a lot of things that would favor a guy like Jaron Jackson Jr., and he's preparing – you know, to, to be a dominant player during this run. 
No way. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. No way in hell. We're going from one international debacle to another one, Jessica. Good grief. What are you talking about? Why are you playing them both? What is, what I'm just is, planning to see it. What is I just Jaren, think it'd be fun. What is, it's not going to be fun when you're getting the hell beat out of you. What is Jaren's strength? Jaren's strength is protecting the rim. So if Jaren is out there with Kessler, somebody's got to guard the other team's four. And I don't know if you know this about international basketball or not. But the four is usually somebody built like a Nicholas Batum, yeah. somebody who's able to run around mm -hmm. on the court. And so Jaron is now chasing dudes around on the perimeter instead of doing what he's supposed to do, which is stop dudes from getting driving but lanes he can at the rim. Also chase dudes yeah, around yeah. the perimeter. Yeah. But yeah. He's, he's, about which Jaren one is he Jr. great at? Which one is he actually elite? pretty great at both? But Which yes, one is he, is he elite, elite as a shot blocker okay. and as right. a rim protector? So and yes, we did see that having Good two bigs what are you in Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert doesn't work very well. Doesn't, so we yeah. understand and what it is, but this is FIBA well, and it's well, fun, and you can have some experimentation. Work well in, in the NBA, it's going to get gobbled up in FIBA. Those dudes are cutting machines in FIBA. Get out of here. We're trying to win gold, Jessica. We're not happy <laughs> just being there. U.S. men's basketball and U.S. women's national soccer team, those are two sports, team sports, where we should be winning gold all the time and doing Is things America like that. Is America even great I, No, no, no. Yeah. no. We'll yeah. have to make yeah. America great again if we do oh, that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's devastating times. Scary hours ahead for the domination. That turned in quickly, too, man. I, That's no, man. Shoot, was ready for I, it. I am not going to. I might need time off bereavement or something like that. If we lose the World Cup and we don't medal in the the FIBA championships, I won't. I'll be. I'll need two weeks off if that happens. I'm not prepared for that, Mike. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I can't see Team USA not not at least getting to the championship game. Right. Um, who they lose? Didn't they lose yeah. like Nigeria in an yeah. exhibition yes. game? They did. They I did. almost did. did. I threw up they before you know I came in the work. You know who was on that team? Gabe no. Vincent. Gabe Vincent. Gabe Vincent. Who ended up being a beast for the Heat last year. But um, you know, I mean, when you look at when you look at like just think defensively what this could look like. Mikael Bridges on the wing, yeah. Brandon Ingram, and yeah. Jaron Jackson Jr. Whew. That's just length upon length upon length. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna be able to score against a, a lineup like that. So. You know, it's just, you know, the, the fact of the matter is what I'm looking forward most to is, is getting back out there and, and seeing some of the, uh, the other players. This is a youth movement right now. Team USA under Grant Hill isn't really relying on, you know, mid-career or late-career veterans anymore mm -hmm. because those guys, they don't necessarily have the hunger to want to play, you know, international basketball. Um, and, and I'll be honest, I don't think it means as much to American basketball players to be on Team USA as it does to – you know, foreign players to go back and play for their for their foreign teams. And you're seeing it a little bit more. Jokic won't be with his team, uh, his country. Um, I don't think uh, uh, it's a lot of other players in that situation that won't be able to play for their teams. But by and large, it's going to get back to USA, meaning uh, having that USA in your chest means something. And I think that's why they're doing a reset and getting some of these younger players who are on the come. On did the you watch the Redeem Team documentary? I didn't, I didn't did see the whole thing, on but the I'm 2008. familiar with it. Yeah, I covered that, I covered that Olympic team. Did so, you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. obviously not. That was 2008, right, in yeah. Beijing, right? 2008, yeah. they mm -hmm. come back. They had the whole debacle in Athens, and Coach mm -hmm. K takes over as coach. Mm -hmm. He goes in, gets Kobe yep. towards the end yep. of yep. his Kobe came back. NBA life, yeah. and he's kind of the elder statesman. And then you have LeBron, mm -hmm. you have D. Wade, you have mm -hmm. Carmelo. Mm -hmm. And it Dwight was this Howard. idea yeah. of like a lot of individually focused players coming together and then really buying into the team aspect. Yeah. And he, yeah. I believe it was Coach K who really started the process of, okay, let's go to Vegas. Mm -hmm. Let's all stay in the same hotel. Yep. Let's treat this as a camp. Let's force ourselves into becoming a basketball family. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. And there yeah. was like a regaining of pride of what it meant to play for mm -hmm. Team USA. I don't think they're in as dire straits in terms of lack of pride of going right. and playing. Not lack right. of pride, but lack of excitement. It's a right. long season. There's a lot of basketball all year long. This really is a, a full year sport yeah. at this point, yeah. which makes it a little more difficult to buy into yet another event. Mm -hmm. But I think you bring up a good point. Like These are young guys who could play for years mm -hmm. and then you build on that they get comfortable with one another and you can see the continuation of a of a team yeah. that becomes a force to be reckoned with on the world stage yeah i mean it's it's a growth it's it's let's get them sort of like the how the aau system was meant to be right you get a a, a young team like ricky rubio has been playing for his his national team since he was 12 or 13. luka Doncic is the same way like these guys grew up playing uh internationally uh nick batum you know all of those guys did the same thing so you know, when you look at what, what these guys can do for USA, as I said, the one thing that they keep pushing out in every single release and every single time you talk to someone from Team USA, it's 
these guys, nine out of the 12 guys, have a history in the Team USA pipeline, either uh, in the amateurs uh, at the under-17 teams or on the select teams to help other teams get ready for Olympic and international. And now they're finally getting their turn. So it's like a, a passing of the torch in a way, man. And I remember you talked about that 2018. <clears throat> Tayshawn Prince was on that team yep. as well, too. And one of the best stories, man, that I've ever heard from, from LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh was how, and I, I've told this story before, I think I've even written about it when it happened, was, <clears throat> you know, first practice, first meeting, uh, when that team got together in Las Vegas, it was like an eight o'clock uh, breakfast meeting uh, in, the, in, the, in the grand lobby room. And, you know, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, all the players take the elevator down to the, to the ballroom where they're gonna have breakfast and everything. And so they get in there, Coach K is in there setting up the meeting and everything, it's eight o'clock. And Kobe Bryant comes in from a back door and he has his knees wrapped, he's sweaty, like, like he's, and he, come, he goes and goes through and sits down. And Dwayne and Chris and all those guys are just joking because they just got into Vegas the night before and they, you know, they're you know, you know, homeboying it up. Yeah. Kobe Bryant had already started his workout at 5.30. <laughs> already went through a two hour workout, right? And he was coming from his first workout. And when he sat down at the same table and he's sweaty and drenched and got ice on his knees and everything, and these guys are just in their house shoes and their loafers, you know, just loafing around, Dwayne said, man, like De LeBron and Dwayne and Chris looked at each other and they were like, oh, S, this is what this is about. Yeah. And they took that to say, okay, if this guy's gonna show up and put in this kind of work and we hadn't even started yet, now we gotta start taking it more seriously. So that's the, that's the benefit of having like a veteran like that who mm -hmm. cares a lot more. And they, they all said they, they, their work ethic changed. And that's when they started plotting a course to, start to play together in Miami right after that. But it was because of what they saw Kobe do, man. And when, you, when you're around somebody who, who works on greatness every single moment that they can, uh, it, it does change you if you truly aspire to be great like that. So those are the stories that I remember from that Team USA 2018. Um, they got the Redeem uh, gold medal. And they all flew back together. Mm -hmm. Like they all were on the same plane coming back. And I remember uh, uh, Dwayne got off in Miami and I was at the Miami airport at the time. Dwayne got off in Miami, Kobe and them, you know, dapped them up, got back on the plane. Then they went to Orlando and dropped Dwight off. And then they went back to LA. So it was like, they all kind of went with each other yeah. back to their hometowns, man, because that team wanted to be together so badly. And not, not just the work ethic for the, the team change, but Kobe yeah. changed and Kobe, was rough kobe we we remember kobe post shack mm -hmm. for the championships kobe was a rough teammate to deal with mm -hmm. kobe kind of ran teammates out of the league just by being so gruff with them and i yeah. think that that I, I wish he was around to talk about it i think that that moment where kobe comes in and he's sitting down and you know what kobe's probably thinking these bums ain't trying to work there. They don't want to work. They don't want this like I want this. Yeah. It's Kobe time, baby. Yeah. Give me the rock and get out the way. Yeah. And then Kobe goes into the gym the next day, and they are in the gym working out also. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, these guys want it also. So if you're willing to, and this has been routinely one of the themes of stories that get shared as it relates to Kobe Bryant, yeah. if you're willing to show him that you'll work, Kobe will rock with you. Oh, and yeah. I think that oh, yeah. part oh, yeah. of the affinity that the team had for one another and part of the way and the documentary does a good job of showing Kobe's walls coming down part of the reason the walls come down is hey Kobe we're willing to work with you when we're not working be our boy be our friend we, yeah. we want, yeah, he had we to, be want more to like you be personal yeah, with he had to be a little more us. personal and he, Kobe yeah. to his credit was willing to do that and, think, and you know what's funny about that my fault no, 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 go ahead. What, what, what was funny about that is that if you just go back and look at how things played out in the seasons after that that pivotal summer for all of them um, they all won. Like, mm -hmm. on that team, Dwayne Wade was the leading scorer. He had to come off the bench. So he had to suppress his ego to be the sixth man, and he ended up being the team's leading scorer for that season. The next year, Kobe Bryant won his championship without Shaq in 2009, 2010. He went back to back. Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and, and, and LeBron James formulated their plan to play together, and then they went to four straight finals after that. So it was almost Jason, like Jason Kidd was on that team. Also, mm -hmm. he was one of the other vets. The, the veterans, yeah, and, the, yeah. the veteran guy. Kidd got a championship with the Mavericks not too long after that. Yes, two years after that, Kidd got his championship there too. So what you saw was, and, and Kobe's been like that. Like Kobe's one of those guys where, and I, I know his ego, man. I had a chance to talk to him a lot, and and you know during his career, and it was like 
these guys had, it was 2008, so this was five years after the 2003 draft when all of mm-hmm. these young superstars came into the league. And Kobe was like, they're coming in to try to take my, take my, my spot. They ain't taking my spot because they don't know how hard I have to work every day. And so when you wake up in the morning, it's 8 o'clock, and this dude is already two hours into his workout day, and practice hadn't even started yet, then you knew it was going to be hell to pay when Kobe got to the gym. So he had a different way of motivating those. But you're right. He had to learn how to be a teammate, how to enjoy the process, and that was important. And it, that is – I think that we don't get the stand with me speech game six against the Celtics or game seven yeah. against the Celtics. We don't get that speech yeah. from yeah. Kobe if he doesn't go through that sort of journey with Team USA in 2008. Yeah. And I important. think, like, an overarching lesson that everyone learned was that all those guys – could respect one another and actually be friends outside of competition Mm -hmm. and the thing that stood out from i believe they played spain first and if like kobe had any actual friend he didn't have a lot of friends Mm -hmm. (laughs) in Mm -hmm. the league but it was 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 pal and he told his team like i'm gonna run through that mfr and the first play of the game he runs through pal gasol (laughs) and shows and then after the game it's like this yeah. is my dude. This is my yeah. brother. And yeah. obviously we've yeah. seen now, I mean, the, the family aspect of right. Pow and Kobe. Right. And it taught all of them, like, we can go play for Team USA. We've got this across our chest at this point in time. Yeah. We are a family. We are a team. And then come NBA season, I can still hate your guts in the yep. middle of the court, but still yep. have, like, massive amount of respect outside of it. It's yeah. a great documentary. Anyone it, who it wants is. to. It, it taught is. me so much about it that is. period of time. I loved it. I thought it was it's really good. That we don't, and I guess. We don't make because, great sports documentaries. Well, we don't get the, the stories that I want. I want the the. I want mm-hmm. that. I want because mm-hmm. we know heads were butted, and we don't get that in, in part probably because Kobe's not around, and it's like, oh, well, we we don't. If we're not gonna get both sides of it, then we don't need to tell it. But there's there was a moment where LeBron James walks off the court mm-hmm. and not looking at Coach K, very disrespectful, very demeaning, mm-hmm. walking past Coach K because Kobe took a shot. Hey, you better get that mf yeah. It goes all the way to the end of the bench, and Coach K tells the story about okay. I've got LeBron and I've got Kobe, yeah, and here yeah. I am, just a Duke Blue Devils coach. These are professionals. <laughs> These are all timers right here. Yeah, now yeah. I've got to go because Kobe was wrong to take that shot. I've got to go address Kobe now, mm-hmm. and Coach K goes and addresses Kobe and sits him down one on one. Like, hey, it's this is a different. This in the Lakers, this is different. You've got to play this way and that way. And said Kobe was beyond receptive to that critique and that criticism. And you talked about Dwayne Wade humbling himself and being the sixth man on that team was a lot of humbling having to go on. And when you can get Kobe Bryant, because we know what the mentality is, when you get Kobe to humble himself and accept a different sort of a role on the team, that goes a world away. That makes a world of difference. And you got Dwayne Wade sacrificing, Melo sacrificing, Kobe sacrificing, Bron sacrificing. And Coach K learning. Coach K learning. Like, what a unique opportunity for – I mean, if you think of that being back in, you know, the period leading up to 2008 for Mm -hmm. Coach K, like – the solidification of him as one of the greatest coaches of all time because of his ability to go in and go from being just a college, a great college coach, a championship winning college coach, but to take so many of those personalities, those egos and form a team that was able to win an actual gold medal. It's why on the bear, do you watch the bear? No. Whole second season, the girl is reading Coach K's leadership book. It's like uh, one of my favorite uh, little side notes. And everyone's like, do you know who Coach K is? And it feels fun that. for sports fans. Mike, before yeah. we let you go, yeah. just real quick, mm-hmm. I wanted to get your take on one NBA-related story mm-hmm. that came out yesterday in regards to we're going to see the NBA and hear the NBA in a different way. ABC has made a change. ESPN has made a change. Yeah. Mark Jackson announced that yeah. he unexpectedly yeah. Yeah. Uh, was let go yesterday. Jeff Van Gundy was fired back in June. So Mark Jackson, uh, I would think maybe the final number of those ESPN layoffs that happened on air talent. But mm-hmm. the reports are that Doris Burke will move into that analyst chair along with Doc River. So it'll be mm-hmm. Mike Breen on play-by-play. Mm-hmm. Doris Burke, who will become the first woman to call a men's national or a men's championship game in any sport, which yeah. is awesome from a, a woman perspective and like yeah. something that growing up, I never even thought about that being a job because I never heard women do it. And Doris mm. Burke has obviously paved such a massive way forward. Yeah. Doc Rivers joins that group. What do you make of the changes and, and how we're going to experience NBA finals in a different way? Well, we've heard all of those voices before. Like before Doc went back into coaching, you know, he was on the broadcast with TNT. Yeah. So it's not, you know, unfamiliar in terms of hearing him in that in that booth. Is this a better crew than what the previous crew was? I, I think this is a more analytical crew. I think this is going to be a more basketball-focused mm-hmm. crew. It almost got to the point where, where Jeff Van Gundy, and I love Jeff Van Gundy and Stan, 
but they became almost cartoon characters. And sometimes you want that because you don't want it to always be about, you know, shots and boxing out and three second defense or threes. You want to have the stories and the, and the one liners every now and then. I don't. You're not going to get that with this new crew. You're just not. Doc Rivers is probably the most uh, in, in terms of personality out of that yeah. group. So. It, it, it is what it is from that standpoint. I don't know if it's going to be better. I just know it's going to be completely different. Um, and I, I left Doris Burke last because, you know, I have the highest regard for Dor Doris Burke. And, you know, when I was working at ESPN, I, I respect her work ethic so much. I've sat at, you know, conference room tables alongside her, uh, picked her brain. She's asked me some things about teams I was covering. And what always impressed me about Doris is that, you know, when she got national assignments as the, either the sideline reporter or, or secondary analyst, um, especially during my years with Miami, she would always call me the day before. And she was coming in town or wherever the heat were, and she would call me the day before, and we would talk on the phone for 20, 30 minutes with her picking my brain over, what did I see at practice? What did I hear? You know, what's going on with the team? So when she got on air, she was prepared with those mm -hmm. stories. Mark Jones does a great job of that too. Mark, Mark You know, Mark is, is great about reaching out and trying to get himself uh, educated on the teams he covers and you are and you I'm sitting there thinking I remember being in a hotel room somewhere and I'm thinking Doris Burke is on the phone with me like she could call anybody in you know around this team but she chose to call me to get my insight so I felt lucky and uh, I tell I tell her that every time I see her so I'm wishing the best for that crew I love each one of those members of that crew um, but I just think it's gonna be different I'm gonna miss mm -hmm. Mark Jones I mean uh, uh, I'm gonna Mark miss Jackson. Mark Mark Jackson and I'm gonna definitely miss uh, JVG uh, in terms of their 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 banter back and forth, but it's just going to be different. Yeah, definitely a different vibe. Mike, enjoy yeah. Las Vegas. Well, 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 I won't be there long, and I, you know, okay. I don't even know if you can enjoy Las Vegas. You just got to endure Las Vegas. <laughs> endure you know what I mean? Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna endure for the two days, three days I'll be there, and uh, uh, check out all of our work. Um, I'm gonna have some written pieces, some video pieces, um, one on one sit down with Jaron Jackson Jr. It's gonna be all on the Grind City Media app, uh, GrindCityMedia.com and MemGrids.com. Uh, so check that all out. It's going to be a fun time. And um, Santi Aldama as well, too. Best of luck. Hopefully those two guys stay healthy because we definitely need them uh, for the regular uh, season and the start of training camp in late September. This thing runs from the last week of August through the first week, uh, first two weeks of September. Get their business done. They're going to play each other on August 13th in the friendly as they get ready for it. So uh, action starts August 25th for the FIBA World Cup. And uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., Santi Aldama, best wishes, man. Y'all go out there and dominate. We will see you when you get back. We will take a quick break when we come back. We are deciding which college football bowl game our little show should unofficially sponsor. Sponsorless bowl game. There are eight to choose from. We have slides for each of them. We'll go through that along with some news from the Pac-12 potential conference realignment. Big news later on today when we come back. Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. There is a good chance that a short king will start Saturday alone atop the Open Championship leaderboard. Brian Harmon, he is 36 years old, and most importantly, again, he's five foot seven, which is good news for those of us who who don't want to watch tall people take control of of yet another sport. They can have the NFL, they can have the NBA, but golf should be a, a short king safe space. The Gary Parish Show live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com.
Memphis fans can now enhance each moment of their day with the refreshingly luxurious taste of Cintron sparkling flavored energy beverages served exclusively at FedEx Forum. Cintron World is a lifestyle beverage brand inspiring everyone to create their lives with intention, energy, and style. As the official partner of the Grizzlies, Cintron is offering a 10% discount on your next online order when you use promo code GRIZZLIES10 at CintronWorld.com and follow the lifestyle on social at Cintron World. Drink it, live it. Obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep-related breathing disorder where a person's breathing is blocked or cut off while sleeping. It is seen in all age groups, but increases in frequency as we age and gain weight. Symptoms include snoring, excessive daytime sleepiness, gasping during sleep, and or insomnia. To schedule an appointment, contact Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialists at 901-276-6507. Let them help you breathe easy and sleep well. It's just, baby went out with the bathwater on all this stuff. It just did. Where it's like, why are we? <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Well, that is, where'd you get that phrase I've from? Never heard are you serious? It's like one of the most what, common seven? phrases ever. I've common. never heard anybody say baby went out with the bathwater. Are you serious? What? The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Topic number one, I think, was not so creative. Okay. And it is the new color of this eggplant retro foam. Okay. I was going to bring this, the actual original in, and I forgot. Well, we have a picture of the original, too. If we could go to that, that second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Change Memphis, the Grizzlies' official partner. Take Five Oil Change is faster than you think. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. Take Five, the stay in your car, 10 minute oil change. It has been over 12 hours since college football insider Brett McMurphy tweeted an eyeball emoji, and it is one of the meanest things he's ever done because I have been thinking about this tweet. For over 12 hours, I woke up this morning and thought to myself, maybe Brett McMurphy has clarified what he meant by this eyeball emoji tweet. And instead, he hasn't. It has close to 2 million views at this point in the day. All we do know is that today could be a very pivotal one in the conference realignment conversation. The Athletic reported that the Pac-12 is holding a meeting with its board, its athletic directors, and Commissioner George Klievkoff this morning because George Klievkoff has a media rights deal. The Pac-12 finally... After months and months and months and months of saying that they had a media rights deal and we would find out about it relatively soon and then never finding out about it, allegedly finally has their media rights deal. George Klievkoff said that it would be ready to present in the next 48 hours. They have a meeting this morning. One would assume to connect the dots that he is ready to present his member institutions with this media rights deal. Then the timing is right because the Arizona Board of Regents is going to meet in an unplanned, unexpected meeting this afternoon. It will be virtual, but the Arizona Board of Regents represents University of Arizona, Arizona State, and Northern Arizona. And one would think that they are voting, or at least having a, a casual conversation about what they should do following the news of maybe a media rights deal that they learned about this morning, and then making a decision on what is to come with the Big 12. The Big 12 have been sitting pat, but it's no secret that they would prefer for some of the other four corner schools to leave with Colorado, be it Arizona, Arizona State, Utah perhaps. There have been some speculation that it will only be Arizona and that Arizona State will hold back and wait and see what happens. I'm thrilled to find out what it is. Uh, the Pac-12 could be all but deceased by the end of today, or it could be reinvigorated. Maybe they're all staying. The whole, when, when USC and UCLA decided they were out, the question became, okay, the Pac-12, which has geographically been fine because it's so far west, and the Big 12, which has been fine because they've had Oklahoma and Texas, which one of these conferences is going to eat the other one? And the thought going into it, was the Pac-12 easy? The Pac-12 was because they you you're you should be able to get your TV deal done and then lure maybe a handful of the Texas schools or the remaining Texas schools to you, and that would effectively 
in the the Big 12. Instead, the Pac-12 fumbled it. And when once Colorado left and bolted for the Big 12, the writing was on the wall. And it was just a matter of time before the, the two Arizona schools followed. And now it becomes, if you're the Big 10, the conference is done now. And the reports that I've read were, hey, the Big 10 doesn't want to be seen as a conference killer. They want that conference to just dissolve. And when it does, they'll come in and pick over who they have left. A vote was done. I do believe by the power of five, maybe by the entire FBS, if it, it was done by the entire FBS to see, hey, can we start sharing revenue with players? And the two conferences that voted to do so, everybody in the Big Ten voted to do so, everybody in the SEC voted to do so, Florida State and Clemson voted to do so. Everybody else said no, no. So now it looks like there's some, some interest in Florida State and Clemson, and there should be to get out of their conference and get to one of the two true power conferences. And if that is the case, if you're the SEC, you kind of got to grab teams to protect yourself. So it, it would make sense for Florida State and Clemson, as I recklessly speculate and play this thing all the way out, it would make sense for the SEC to say, no, you guys can come with us. We don't want the Big Ten down here in this region. It would also make sense for the Big Ten to say, hey, you know what? Screw Notre Dame. Forget them. Bleep them. We don't want them anymore. Come on, Oregon. Come on, Washington. Clemson, Florida State, y'all roll with us now. That would make sense also. So this, this Arizona vote has huge ramifications, mm -hmm. not just with those two conferences, but with the two, the two true power conferences from a monetary standpoint. It has ramifications for them as well. And I can't wait to watch the Big uh, – not the Big 12. The, the Pac-12 just crumble. They should not be this. They shouldn't. They, they just dropped the bag. And now the TV deal, which I bet was rushed, what are they going to be? They're going to be on UPN? Well, They're going to be, be on ABC Family? Nothing going to be, be worse than the impetus of the worst media deal in the history of media deals. And I don't say that hyperbolically. It's the Pac-12 network. That was the beginning of the end for the conference. There was a lot of pride. There was a lot of stability in at the Pac-10 turned to the Pac-12. At one point, the Pac-12 had the best TV deal Correct. out of everybody in 2011, 2012. And there is a reason why Colorado left the Big 12 originally and sought West Coast pastures in the Pac-12. And there was a lot of pride in the connectivity of those schools and the geographical connectivity in those schools. And they felt as if they were a unit and a proud unit. Conference of Champions, let's go. They have done nothing but falter since. That is why USC and UCLA are going to the Big Ten. That is why, likely, the Pac-12 is going to be in shambles. ASAP and poor Washington and Oregon are just stuck right now, waiting, begging for the Big Ten to decide to move quicker than anticipated in adding an additional two member schools. But I'm with you. I often refer to the big event of college football that will happen probably sooner rather than later. And it has gone from the race to 16 teams, been there, done that. It will now be the race to 20 plus teams and which two or three conferences and the Big 12 has played their way into at least being a player at this point, which is wildly impressive considering the trajectory when Texas and Oklahoma went OUT out. Now they get to play along, and then it is what schools are left behind. We'll talk all about it because we will find out what happens today. We have to get to more important pressing matters, which is deciding which college football bowl game our little show, the Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt, is going to sponsor next season because I was shocked, aghast to learn that eight bowl games don't have title sponsors for next season. One might think, hmm, do we have too many bowl games? No, they will all find their sponsors and all will be right in the world. And we are going to unofficially, officially sponsor one of these games. And the wonderful OJ, other Jacob, our director extraordinaire, created slides for each of these games to help us pick which one we are going to vote on. Our chat failed us. Sorry, chat. It's just, it's the truth. They voted for the Birmingham Bowl which is our first slide, but the Birmingham Bowl got 46% of our chat vote. Holiday Bowl got 28%, Cure Bowl 15%, Other got 8%. So let's go through and figure out which one we want to do, starting with the Birmingham Bowl. The Birmingham Bowl, a place where Memphis has played twice in that bowl game. They are 0-2 in Birmingham. The tie-ins these days are the SEC versus the AAC, reigning champ East Carolina. Fun fact, CJ, you just got back from a luxurious vacation in Birmingham. Nothing better. Nothing refreshes your body and spirit like a 16-hour vacation in Birmingham, the Magic City. They don't call it the Magic City for nothing. That 16-hour trip with seven hours spent in the car, some of the most magical times I've had in a long time. I love the city of Birmingham. Okay, so you enjoy Birmingham. I love it. Glamour City? Oh, yeah. Palm trees? No. Palm trees in your spirit, in your heart, oh, in your soul. Okay. Let's go. Uh, 
Memphis doesn't have great memories in Birmingham, and thus I don't really necessarily want to throw my card before, uh, behind the Birmingham Bowl, but it's an option, so let's go to number two. And the second option is the Camellia Bowl, located in another Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama. Tie-ins are the MAC Conference USA versus the Sun Belt, reigning champ Buffalo. Fun fact, home to the first flight school for civilians. They got a great museum called Legacy Museum. And I think everybody should should go check that out. Um, but that's that's all Montgomery has going for it. Alabama State is there, and you guys know how I, I do not like them. Uh, but it is close to Tuskegee. It's like 45 minutes away from Tuskegee, so uh, that that may have my vote. They that have may a zoo. Have my vote. Yes, they do. It's a, it's a pretty cool zoo. And we should have mentioned it's important because as the unofficial sponsor of this bowl, like we're gonna fight to travel to this bowl, and uh, Montgomery's fine. I just would like something a little more. It's close to Atlanta. It's close to Atlanta. It's about an hour away from Atlanta. It's about it's a four 45 hour and minutes 50 away. drive from Memphis. Yeah, that's fine. It's about 45 minutes away from Tuskegee again. The more and more I think about it, the more and more I, what's the name of the bowl? Which one? The, the Camellia Bowl? The, yeah, the more and more I like the Camellia Bowl. I was there a couple of years ago for the Red Tail Classic at Crump Stadium. I think it's still Crump. Oh, boy. That was a, that was a doozy. I think I have a Camellia Bowl sweatshirt. So I already have merch. We're on our way. Next option, the third bowl that we can pick from is the Cure Bowl. I definitely have a Cure Bowl sweatshirt located in Orlando, Florida, played at Camping World Stadium. The tie-ins are the AAC versus the Sun Belt. Fun Belt reigning champ is Troy. Fun fact, there are over 100 lakes in the Orlando area. Land o' Lakes, also Land of Disney World and Land of Universal Studios. I this one might get my vote. What what are the tie-ins? What AAC and Sunbelt. Okay. Nice people at the Cure Bowl. All right. Ah, that leaves a little to be desired. They also I don't know if in with their new lack of title sponsor, but they've always been very uh well tied in with breast cancer awareness and they have used the the breast cancer pink ribbon along with their I don't know, what do you call it? Bowl logo yeah that's the word for it so we love breast cancer awareness i'm the child of a breast cancer survivor so that could that could weigh and we could go to disney world cj our significant others could come on board and maybe i know at one point the cure bowl gave players and teams tickets to universal studios but who knows what theme park we could go to that one might be high up there next up we have a fourth choice in the titleless sponsored bowl games the holiday bowl located in san diego california this might be the one the holiday bowl is pac-12 acc mm -hmm. and it's usually good, good. Pac-12 ACC. It's played at Petco Park. I love bowl games played at baseball, baseball stadiums. Fun fact, there are fines in San Diego for leaving your Christmas lights up too long. It's the Holiday Bowl, which feels a little hypocritical because the Holiday Bowl would signify that you should have holiday all year long if you're the location of the Holiday Bowl. No. I am team leave your Christmas lights up however long you want to leave your Christmas I'm lights team up. team take them junts down. Well, that's because you're a Grinch. Am I? It, no, the Grinch didn't want to celebrate Christmas on Christmas. I don't want to celebrate Christmas on days not Christmas. What are you talking about? You got a week after Christmas Day to take your lights down. Figure it out. I Christmas think I'm leaning towards the Holiday Bowl. The Holiday Bowl is, is now my one. It used to be the San Diego County Credit Union Holiday Bowl, but the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt Holiday Bowl sounds a lot better. Holidays are fun. Holidays are celebratory. Who doesn't get excited about a holiday bowl. It merges two of the best things in the world together, holidays and college football bowl games. Bada boom, bada bang. This one is the leader in the clubhouse. We Next can get, up, though. And we can get San Diego State versus, I, I guess, East Carolina <laughs> eventually. Isn't it Pac-12 ACC? It's exactly. not AAC. Exactly. Oh, you think East Carolina exactly. is getting left behind? CJ? I hate Are to they? break it to the Pirates, oh, but no. I don't think East Carolina is going to make the cut in my big event. No offense, East Carolina. Fine, it's San okay. Diego State and North Carolina keep State. keep doing you. There you go, the Wolf Pack. Did I ever tell you that for the longest time I thought I had the University of North Carolina as my ringtone, like their fight song as my ringtone, and then one day I learned I'd had the NC State fight song all along? 
Those were fun times. Okay, next bowl option is the Los Angeles Bowl, founded in 2021, formerly sponsored by Jimmy Kimmel. I don't know why Jimmy Kimmel has distanced himself from the Los Angeles Bowl. Maybe it has to do with the writer's strike. He stands in solidarity. Can't be a scab with a bowl game if you can't write for your own show. Tie-ins are the Mountain West and the Pac-12. The reigning champ is Fresno State. Fun fact, the Hollywood Walk of Fame has 2,600 stars, and there could be two more if you and I got stars for being associated with the Los Angeles Bowl. Three more. OJ, who has never been to L.A.? OJ's never been to L.A.? Well, well. OJ has never been inside of, well, one OJ has, but this OJ hasn't. Again, this can help with the revitalization of, of the OJ, OJ brand. He's get, never even been in Los we Angeles. Give, we give, we give OJ. Never even we, been put, there. we put another star, so it's 2,603, one of them being OJ. Did OJ, OJ ever back have on? a star? You know OJ had I a star. I would assume that he did. You know OJ had a star. Did they take it off? Like, well, I don't know. OJ's Heisman still sits in the USC trophy you, room. Do you think so the OJ not sure that star OJ on star the has been erased? Still there? I don't know. It's Cosby's. I mean, Cosby's isn't. So I would think mm -hmm. OJ's wouldn't be either. But who knows? I mean, you can go visit his house. That's on the Hollywood house. You can list. visit OJ Simpson's house. Well, you house? drive past it. You can get close to the gate. Visit the house. The house. Hmm. Did that once. Oh God. We'll talk after the show. <laughs> Not inside, just you do like the weird tours that they give you the map of stars. And one of those is OJ's house. One of them is the house where Marilyn Monroe was found RIP'd. Um, okay, next up, we have another bowl game to get to. Happier times ahead. The Military Bowl, located in Annapolis, Maryland. AAC versus ACC. Current champion Duke. Fun fact, Annapolis is home to the United States Naval Academy. I have heard that it should be a bucket list event to go to a game in Annapolis. So... I don't want it to be a bowl game. I'd rather just go to a Navy football game and, and call it good. Navy Army. Go go see one of them. Navy versus one of the service academies. I'd rather do Can't that. Can't, like, the United States of America sponsor the military bowl? <laughs> if there was ever a game for the, Jessica, for we the country to step in. we don't have enough money for that. Inflation is high. We're sending billions over to Ukraine to fight the Russians. Like, we just don't have the funds for but that. But we fund our military better than we fund anything else in this country. Thus, the we military fund, bowl by association. What do you mean? We don't fund military people. Correct. The, the, no, no, the no. salaries are poor. Clear. The VA is abysmal. We're not funding people. We'll make bombs and planes and tanks and stuff, but we're not paying people. Exactly, no. but we tend to love to pay football. It's one of the biggest businesses in America. Nothing would surprise me more if instead of giving money to deserving veterans, we just gave it to the military bowl instead. USA. We won't be sponsoring the military bowl. It feels sacrilegious. Next up, we have the Myrtle Beach Bowl, founded in 2020, played at Coastal Carolina's famous Teal Field, tie-ins Conference USA, or MAC versus the Sunbelt current champion Marshall. Fun fact, Vanna White was born in Myrtle Beach. Also, fun fact, did not know they had a Ferris wheel on the beach. This might be a close second to the Holiday Bowl. I really want to hang out on Myrtle Beach. Me too. Myrtle Beach seems like a cool beach to, to go get it in. Um, but yeah, it's still it's still the Holiday Bowl for me. Holiday Bowl, Birmingham Bowl, real close, neck and neck, one two. Okay, we have one left, okay. the eighth bowl. Please be Bahamas. The New Mexico Bowl. Oh. It has not had a sponsor since 2021. There, they might be the one desperate enough to help us be their sponsor with our limited funds. The Titans are the Mountain West Conference and Conference USA current champion BYU. Off to the Big 12, they played their way from a New Mexico Bowl into the Big 12 Conference of Survival. Fun fact: Albuquerque is at an elevation of 5,314 feet above sea level. We can call this the Altitude Bowl. Everyone knows I'm a full respecting participant of altitude. CJ hates altitude and doesn't think it has anything to do with an athlete's ability of performance. Just, Just go back to our coverage of the NBA Finals this year. Put a bleeping NBA team in Albuquerque then and let's see how many championships let's they not. win. Let's go. Why, why the hell not? There's one in Salt Lake City. It can't be any worse than that. Albuquerque is a cool place. Okay. I'm sure that it is. Santa Fe is cooler. How far away is Santa Fe from Albuquerque? I, you got a computer I don't know why I asked you that could, question into Google the ether. It. Like Didn't the little like, New Mexico gremlin was going to come by and be like, actually. Isn't that where... Uh, 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 what's a Casper? Isn't that where Casper took place? Weren't they driving from Santa Fe somewhere? And that's how they stumble across Casper in the movie? I think Maybe. so. Maybe. I think so. I'm not, I can't, Christina Ritchie did a great job in that, in that role. What a good movie. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. I am. Christina Ritchie. So glad she came back through Wednesday. Yeah. 
wonderful to see her yeah. career come back. Are we officially placing our vote on the Holiday Bowl? Um, my, my vote is, I guess, Holiday Bowl. Other Jacob? Uh, yeah, Holiday. Sounds good with me. I'll take the Holiday Bowl as well holiday in San Bowl. Diego. Just a nice little short drive to Los Angeles so we can take OJ to his birthplace of holiday LA Bowl at the same time. We will be unofficially, officially sponsoring the Holiday Bowl. Holiday it's, Bowl, you have your people call our people. It's only like $500,000 to sponsor a bowl. Only? Oh, well, listen, Think we, we, about work the, for, we work for a multi-billion dollar company. I know. We could pitch this to the higher ups. Could you imagine how mad the city of Memphis would be when they are trying to figure out all this stuff between like how much money FedEx Forum gets versus Simmons Bank Memorial Stadium, aka the Liberty Bowl Simmons gets? Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. One day I'll get it right. And instead of like having a little help you help us situation where the Grizzlies ownership puts some extra money into FedEx Forum, they're like, no. We're giving five hundred thousand dollars to Jessica and CJ to be the sponsors of is my name? the holiday bowl. Is my bowl. name gonna be on there? Is it yes. not just gonna be the Jessica Benson show? Holiday Bowl, CJ, or is it going to be... Gra does this graphic not so say going, Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt? We're going full name. The Jessica fact, Benson Show with CJ Hurt Holiday Bowl. To make this richer for our higher-ups, because I'm a businesswoman, we will call it the Grind City Media's Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt Holiday Bowl, a casual GCMJBSWCH, and that way we get full sponsorship all of the shows included within the Grand City Media universe are included. We'll do full coverage, but our show, this was our idea. So our show, and technically it was OJ's idea. So we should also put the Je Grand City Media's Jessica Benson show with CJ Hurt, directed by OJ Holiday, Holiday Bowl. Bowl is the official name of the Holiday Bowl. Give me, those, here give me that out. acronym again. It is GCMJBSWCHDOJ. Is it the Department of Justice or directed by OJ? I guess DBOJ. Let me do it one more time. And I like CJ, not CH, because CH is my dad. That's okay, okay. Yeah, so CJ, go. GCMJBSWCJDBOJ, Holiday Bowl. Let's go. And this logo, I mean, what more could you ask? We just had a rebranding. The fonts are fun. We could live stream it. Who knows the media rights deal for the Holiday Bowl, except it's a good bowl, or at least it was with the Pac-12, but the Pac-12 is looking... Pack 12 on Grind City Media. So many things have been solved in this period of time. We'll take a quick break. Yes. Grind City Media presents Pack 12 After Dark. It was all leading to this. <laughs> we, get, we get a lot of sultry music playing in the background coming into and going to commercial breaks. Yes. Yeah. It's just you gotta, and me in this talk. studio. With it, sorry, this show, Morning Can't Exist, because it's just us commentating on Pack 12 After Dark between... Who, who we got? <laughs> Oregon State. And UNLV. And UNLV. Pac-12 after New Mexico after State and Washington State. Stanford Come taking on. on Northern Arizona. Stanford playing a non-conference game against Yale. Stanford hanging on by a thread, the Ivy of the West. We have so, so much room for activities. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about TV Tuesday. We'll continue to pontificate about our future as the media rights deal of the Pacific 12 Conference. It just makes sense. It just means more. We'll be right back. We got a special guest. Kelvin Gates. I treat HB2 Huddle like my ESPN HBCU Huddle. You know, and I'm getting mad. I'm throwing stuff. I'm driving fast because Mike said something bad about uh, Jackson State. Uh, he predicted, CJ might have predicted that we might lose again. <laughs> Get all of your HBCU sports and culture news by tuning in to HBCU Huddle with CJ Hurt and Mike Wallace. New episodes drop every Thursday on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and Spotify. Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. FIBA basketball, international basketball, the topic of this last segment, and the Memphis Grizzlies have two players that will be participating. Jaron Jackson Jr. will be playing for Team USA, and Santi Aldama 
will play for Spain. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Try the $2.99 Strawberry Shortcake Snowball Slush Float from Sonic. An icy slush with real strawberries topped with a snowball of ice cream and crunchy sugar crystals. Your official sweet escape this summer. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. $2.99 Strawberry Shortcake Snowball Slush Float. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Price applies to medium size only. Tax not included. Select markets now feature soft serve. No matter what time of year it is, there's always something exciting happening at FedEx Forum in Memphis. And when you want tickets to the hottest concerts, sporting events, and more, you can find them at Ticketmaster. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of tickets available for all the events you can't miss. Check out what's happening at FedEx Forum and get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. Presented by Cintron. Experience the bold taste of Cintron sparkling flavored energy beverages served exclusively at FedEx Forum as an aspirational lifestyle beverage brand. Cintron World keeps Memphis fans looking good, feeling great. Use promo code GRIZZLIES10 for a 10% discount on your next online purchase at CintronWorld.com and follow the lifestyle on social at Cintron World. Drink it, live it. If you support Grind City Media being the new media rights deal home for the Pac 12, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Make our show sing. <laughs> Get us more followers. And then one day we can also not just sponsor the Jessica Benson sh Excuse me. It's going to take a while to get used to this. Grind City Media's Jessica Benson show with CJ Hurt directed by OJ Holiday Bowl. Not only can we only sponsor it, we can also air it live on Grind City Media. Because if other media organizations can live stream games, why can't we? Speaking it into existence now. But we do have to get into a little TV Tuesday. And it was a sad day in the TV world yesterday. Two big, big losses. Uh, the day started finding out that Paul Rubens, a.k.a. Pee Wee Herman died at the age of 70. He died following a six-year battle with cancer. He released a statement of his own on the night before he passed, apologizing for not going public with the battle he faced the last six years, thanked his fans who have been with him all along the way. One of the most successful comedians to come out of the Groundlings comedy organization. Uh, he created the character of Pee Wee Herman at the Groundlings. It obviously exploded into being one of the most recognizable comedic bits ever. Um, I was not a huge Pee Wee Herman fan. I think it was like just a little too old for me being born in 92, but obviously like familiar with it. I've seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Um, were you a big Pee Wee Herman fan? Uh, you were too young. I was a touch too old. Okay. For for Pee Wee when he came came out, but you you know everybody in middle in middle school and elementary school um, was talking about Pee Wee Herman. It was just one of those shows, uh, big comfy couch. I throw Barney in there. Um, it was it was that era uh, of show. Maybe even Lamb Chops play along, Reading Rainbow. Like it was in that era of of kids TV show. And those shows are important, man. They they yeah. are. They help you learn so much not just academically but from a personal standpoint so that you're able to interact with your peers which is very important at that age you're able to interact with them in positive ways hey you got to share take take your turn and just be be nice to to people we need more shows like that for grown-ups because it seems like some of y'all asses forgot yeah it's true i don't obviously i don't have kids right now so i'm not super well versed in the 
child cinematic universe, but even when you were just talking about like Reading Rainbow and Lamb Chops and, and Pee Wee and Sesame Street and Barney, and then even like outside, was it outside the box or inside the box? Out of uh, the box. Out of the box. Out, out of, of the box. box. Take a box, put it in another, and now what's it gonna do inside? I love that show. But shows like that, like truly, uh, represent so much like legitimate educational opportunities for kids and it's entertaining and Pee Wee was so good at that or Paul Rubin was so good at that through the character of Pee Wee Herman and it was something that started as an adult comedic bit that turned into a very beloved childhood show and the one thing I will always think of from Pee Wee's Big Adventure is when he's like take a picture it'll last longer and I went through a very long period of time where I thought that was the greatest comeback of all time take a picture it will last longer so RIP to Paul Rubens responsible for so much joy and so I many did not lives. realize Pee Wee was 80s I thought Pee Wee was 90s uh, and he's so, late 80s right so I was too young for it also okay. we were both too young for it but it had a second, like, yeah. I would watch, like, Pee-wee's Big Adventure would be on, whatever it was at the that, time, Fox that's Family. Why, that's why I thought it was 90s, because it was just one of those things that yeah. stayed on your, your TV. Um, but, yeah, apparently it was, like, 85, 86. Okay. Well, we also lost uh, another member of the television community, Angus Cloud. This one, it hurt. I'm not going to lie. He is best known for playing Fezco on Euphoria. And Angus Cloud passed away at the age of 25. This message was shared from the Euphoria community. His family released a statement saying that he lost his father last week. He intensely struggled with that loss. And even though no cause of death was provided, he has been really open with his battles with mental health. And the statement included reminders to others that they're not alone and should not fight in silence. This guy was just so good on euphoria one of my favorite characters on euphoria and he had never acted before ever in his life he was discovered on the streets of new york city it was like an old school like when i was a kid i thought people legitimately got discovered all the time if you traveled to los angeles and were walking amongst the hollywood walk of fame i thought that's where people got discovered just walking down the streets by producers and agents i thought people walking down the streets in new york city had the same thing that's what actually happened to him and at first he thought it was a prank or a scam and eventually the creator of euphoria sam levinson sat down with him along with one of the casting agents was like no this is legit like you are the perfect vibe you are exactly the person that we want to play this role and even though the character like allowed him to play like an easy character to play because there were some similarities he always made a point of like no like I learned to act and I learned how to make this character my own it's really sad obviously the least important piece of any of this is that uh, Euphoria season three hasn't been filmed but it is worth noting that he was taken into custody at the end of the finale of season two and so there is kind of an, an end arc to that but I'll always wonder what could have happened to Lexi and Fezco, and I'll always wonder what was in the note that he left her when he wasn't able to make it to her show. But that was a really sad loss and uh, made me sad yesterday. So rest in peace to both those people and thoughts and prayers to all of their families. Real quick before we get out of here, CJ, what are you watching on TV? Survival of the Thickest. I, I binged that like two or three weeks ago. Um, and if you're not watching that, you should watch it. You, Jessica, would love it. You should absolutely watch that. Okay. It's, a, it's a great comedy is easy to watch is 30 minutes on long about 30 minutes closer to like 25 minutes long on the netflix and you just boom boom zoom straight through it like i said one night just sat down like, oh i'm gonna watch one episode and i do not binge i don't binge that way like all at once i string it out a little bit one episode here one episode there that's how i do it and that one was so good just watched it all the way through um secret invasion ended so got the final episode it's a six-parter uh, hour-long episodes on Disney Plus chronicle, chronicling uh, Nick Fury's um, saga with the scrolls. That was so good. I really enjoyed that also. So I've, I finished that. Um, watching a couple of documentaries. There's a, a documentary that's escaping, my, escaping me right now on the max that is following a serial killer up in New York, um, he, the serial killers target are gay men, and that it's talking about the tension in the late 80s, early 90s, I do believe, between the gay community and the police department in New York City and why this killer was able to continue to go on and do kill a whole bunch of, of people. So I'm watching that, making my way through Big Bang Theory. 
Uh, you know, I always got one of those shows that I'm making my way through, uh, throwback show. So making my way through Big Bang Theory. And, oh, I need to watch this week's Righteous Gemstones It's the also. finale. No way, is it? Yes. There's oh. two episodes. They came out with two episodes. Oh, they dropped both of them? Yes. Oh. And they, we oh. didn't know that it was the finale. We watched it last night. It's so good. I am not. I won't spoil anything. Um, they also, it's so good. They, uh, Harley Quinn is back. So they dropped three episodes of Harley Quinn. I love Harley Quinn. And Invincible has, they dropped a one-off episode, um, what's her name, uh, Adam, I, I forget her full name, but they, they dropped one of those episodes, so I watched that also, it was good, it was mm -hmm. good. Well, and I can't wait to talk to you about the Righteous Gemstones finale, it's two episodes, uh, you got a little Baby Billy Bibles bonkers, I just want Baby Billy's Bibles bonkers all the time, I don't even know the Bible in that way, and yet I'm getting up for a family feud style bible show i know none of the answers it's like watching jeopardy there, there it's tough is, there is a game show or at least there was on game show network where it centered around where not centered around where it was questions about the bible and none of the contestants did well it's none hard them, because the questions it's a very long book CJ. the questions would be hey on the third tuesday of the month how many goats are you supposed to sacrifice You're like wait what this was like how many days was Lazarus dead before? 28? Jesus, it was four. Four? Okay, I, I said 11. I don't know. And the only one that I could get is uh, whatever the answer was Noah. And it was something about the ark. And I was like, Noah! And I was like, wow, I know the most basic level. My old confirmation teachers would be so disappointed in how far I have fallen. But it's great. I, I'm happy that Righteous Gemstones has been renewed for season four just because it brings so much joy and they have truly reached a DGAF level where they do whatever they want to do. And you will see what I mean by that. And it's just nice to have a show that like doesn't play scared at all and just does the goofiest, wildest stuff consistently. I also am very much of the belief that some shows should just end like in a really graceful way where they're still really good and it leaves you wanting something more insecure. Um, Secession just recently did it. And uh, even Barry, I thought did, they could have ended maybe a little earlier, but I thought they ended in a good spot. And I think the Righteous Gemstones, comedies do it the most where they just play it out because there's always something ridiculous that you can pile on. There's always a yes and. That's what they teach you in improvisation. And I feel like comedic writers really play by that. I would have been okay with the way that this one ended. I would have been okay with it being the end. I don't like when comedies do this. Big Bang is going to do this at some point and I'll get there because it's 12 seasons of Big Bang. Like that, No TV show needs that many seasons. Very few. Let me take that yes. back. Very few need that many seasons. Very few do good things with that many seasons in Big Bang Theory. I think uh, A Modern Family, 30 Rock, some of those most recent really good comedies struggle after like season seven, Especially six or seven. Then, yeah. And so with... Um, righteous gemstones i do hope that it ends before it gets to the point of struggling where you're just watching it because you watch the first and you love the characters of and, and, and you're you, attached like yo just just end it i'm with you end things early what are you watching i know now i'm like very lost righteous gemstones un unaware that it was going to be the finale we are getting through that show the other two on max which is really funny like molly shannon wanda sykes the oh yeah and she's fantastic hey check this out if you're trying to get me to watch something tell you wanda's, in wanda's it. one of those in it writing it producing it wanda's one of those people who is like okay i know if she's on it, she I, like I'll it. Love it wanda sykes <laughs> and and larry whitmore those two people just hey cj these two one of these two people have something to do with it i'll be like, okay cool what's your I'm episode number again is it f you give it three I think I get, yeah, three, three, four. They're short. They're 30 minutes? Mm hmm Yeah, so I'll give it 20 a- 20 sometimes. I'll, I'll give it a good four. Okay. It's funny. It's, it's good satire, and it gets better and better. We just started season two, and just the commentary that it has on the entertainment industry is hysterical at all levels, and it's just, it's ridiculous. But it's, it's funny, and you know, that's my wheelhouse. I know, but I don't, I'm, I hate when I say something's funny, and then if I find out that you don't think it's funny, it hurts. 
Jessica, I get it. It's a matter of taste. It, you'll be fine. You'll I know, fine. but that's how it, you're not special. This is how I feel with anyone. Like, if I tell anybody that I think something's funny and then they're hey, like, this that is your, was dumb. This is your second time today telling me I'm not special, by the way. I just have to remind you. You I got your big head when I said that you might not be an alien because you're too weird, too out there. Too weird. I got <laughs> a big else, head. I got a big I head because you insulted me. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Get out of here. Oh, I'm also watching this fool on Hulu, and that follows. Um, a Latino family, I do believe Mexican-American family. One of them has just gotten out of jail. The other one works at a place that rehabilitates formerly incarcerated people. That has been, I've audibly squealed with laughter okay. a couple of times, and that's on the Hulu. We finally finished Quarterback, which is a docu-series, so I won't save it for our Thursday documentary comments. Um, quarterback was fine. It did feel like it was like force-feeding my documentary vegetable, my sports documentary vegetable incredible access the fact that one of the quarterbacks that they had in season one a quarterback won a super bowl in that season and honestly probably gave the most access of anyone because patrick mahomes and his wife Brittany mahomes think what you want about her she is not afraid to be authentically 100 percent herself and show a large part of their life throughout this and so you get a true idea of like what the season was like for not just patrick mahomes but the mahomes family it's incredible they couldn't have written it any better unless jalen hurts had been the other quarterback feature and they were playing each other in Super Bowl. You got one quarterback. I hadn't watched it, but I do think it's interesting, and I'm I'm close to being like, okay, maybe I'll watch this one day. Uh, you got one who wins a Super Bowl, then you got the other one who just gets benched and disappears for a couple of weeks from his team. And then there's just Kirk. And then there's Kirk. Kirk's kind of like Ken. Once again, Chris looked at me during it and goes, not me rooting for Kirk Cousins this season. And he like doesn't get invited to the NFL honors until the last second and watching him then go do his like little bit. Remember when he sang with Kelly Clarkson? That man loves to sing. That That is a musical theater star trapped in a football player's body. He just wants to be a theater kid. He just wants to be an acapella member. Anyway, it was an okay watch. I, I recommend it from a access standpoint, from a NFL propaganda standpoint. It was entertaining, but I think it was eight episodes and it was like five episodes too long at certain points. Anyway, that'll do it for today's show. We will be back tomorrow. It will be a Wednesday. D'Angelo Williams will join us. We never know what we'll get in with him. And speaking of quarterbacks, this week we are going to draft quarterbacks, current active quarterbacks. And you know how much CJ loves the importance of the quarterback position and especially the payment of the quarterback position in the NFL. The Athletic came out with their quarterback tiers, and so we will give our own tiered draft of quarterbacks. That'll be on Thursday. In the meantime, everyone have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. So we're going to unofficially sponsor the uh, Holiday Bowl. Yes. I can't wait. I hear San Diego is beautiful. San Diego, a whale's. I am making my way. Yeah, I, can, I tried to interrupt you there. I am making my way through Anchorman in like 15 minutes.